Actually, we don't need a specific order to define a scale. Since we have a designated root, we can impose any order of the notes using the properties that they have in music. It's actually very useful to use some of these properties to organize the notes of a scale. Usually we see these notes organized alphabetically or chromatically, exactly as we would see them laid out on a piano keyboard. We start with the root and then go up chromatically, adding the notes belonging to the scale as we find them. For example, let's take A, C, D, G, and E with C as our designated root. We start on C, the designated root, and then we go up chromatically. C sharp is not in the set, but the next note, D, is. And we continue this until we have all the notes in the scale sorted. Now we've sorted the scale and we have C, D, E, G, and A, with C as the designated root. This is nothing more than just the C major pentatonic scale using our definition of what a scale is. And that's how we usually sort the notes in a scale, which by the way, is a method we have used extensively in the encyclopedia. This sorting method will allow us to deduce an important property of a scale, which is its intervallic formula. The intervallic formula is a string of characters created by showing the intervals between two consecutive notes in a scale when they are sorted using the aforementioned criteria. Let's look at the major pentatonic scale. C, D, E, G, and A with C as a designated root. C to D is a major second. We will write it as W, representing the whole step from C to D. And then D to E, another W. Then E to G is a minor third, so we write lowercase m and then three. Then G to A, another W. And then we will complete the octave, making the intervallic formula a circular pattern, which will become handy later on. So A to C, another minor third. So the intervallic formula for the major pentatonic is whole, whole, minor third, whole, minor third. The major scales intervallic formula is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. A major triad is a major third, minor third, perfect fourth. So in the Universal Encyclopedia of Scales, we wanted these intervallic designations to be consistent across the board and one to one. So we could always correlate an intervallic formula with a scale and vice versa, regardless of enharmonic designation or diatonic consistency. What I mean by that is this. If I have a distance between two notes, like this, this three half step distance will always be designated as a minor third, regardless of whether I'm calling this second note a D sharp or an E flat. So here's the list of intervallic designations. Half step is written as H. Two half steps is whole step. Three half steps is minor third. Four half steps is major third. Five half steps is perfect fourth. Six half steps is a tritone. Seven half steps, perfect fifth. Eight half steps, minor sixth. Nine half steps is a major sixth. 10 half steps is a minor seventh. And 11 half steps is a major seventh. Now we can guarantee that every scale has one and only one possible intervallic formula. So let's look at some interesting uh, properties of these intervallic formulas and why they're useful. The first interesting property of the intervallic formula is that it is root independent. It doesn't matter if we're talking about the C major pentatonic or the D major pentatonic or the G major pentatonic. They all share the same intervallic formula. We could say that whole, whole, minor third, whole, minor third is the intervallic formula for the major pentatonic without having to mention the root. Another property is that the intervals always add up to exactly one octave or 12 half steps. We always close the intervallic formula showing the distance from the last note to the first an octave higher. Yet another interesting property is that the amount of intervals is identical to the amount of notes. The last note is the first one repeated. So every note is accompanied by an interval to the next note. Therefore, the two amounts are the same. But the most important property 
is that the anabolic formula is cyclical over the octave. Meaning that no matter how many times we cycle through the formula, we always get a well-formed scale with the same amount of notes as the original scale. Let's take the major pentatonic formula. Whole, whole, minor third, whole, minor third. The first and last notes are the same pitch class. Cycling the formula to the left is like taking the first whole step and putting it at the end. Whole, minor third, whole, minor third, whole. But the notes are exactly the same as in the original scale. D, E, G, A, and C. This new intervallic formula is merely just a mode of the original formula that we started with. So this new intervallic formula that we created by cycling through the original and unchanged note grouping represents a really cool concept in music called modes. So as where we had that original intervallic formula of whole, whole, minor, third, whole, minor, third, we call that our source scale. So now we have a mode of that source scale represented as whole, minor, third, whole, minor, third, whole. So come back next video where we dive even deeper into this topic and we take the scales that we have and we superimpose them on the circle of fifths to create these really cool polygons and shapes that we're gonna call graphs. This is a really cool uh, technique that's gonna allow us to see certain characteristics of these source scales and their modes and how they can relate to and from one another.